Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Just a second. Here. Uh. No. Okay, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me fine? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I can hear you, and I'm just adjusting your audio levels. Hopefully, we will be uh, uh, approximately... Discord's very weird, so hopefully we will be at approximately the right uh, Discord or the right vocal levels uh, while we're chatting. Uh, real quick, uh, just to confirm, uh, name and pronouns. Uh, Levi Matthews, uh, he, him. All right. Classics. Excellent, excellent. All right. <laughs> Levi Matthews, welcome to the show. Um, you have... Uh, I feel like you've you've asked to debate me about atheism multiple times, but I don't know what you actually want to debate with me about. Um, however, um, I accepted your debate challenge uh, because that's what I do. I often accept debate challenges. So what's yeah. what's your actual contention with my position? I'm I'm curious. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when you one time you were talking about anti theism and you were addressing the fact that science is, doesn't always get things right. Like how they True. thought, like, oh well, back in the old days, they used to think shoving shit into your wounds would cure cure them or something like that. And sure, it's sure. like, well, that sounds like a, an argument that an, a religious apologist would make about in order to defend their religion's sake, saying like, oh, see, science doesn't get it right all the time. So, like, I don't know. And generally, I I'm not totally sure about my this position myself, but. I do stand on anti-theist grounds to a degree. I'm still kind of okay. split whether or not I fully b believe in it or fully believe in the eradication of religious belief or not. Hmm. Um, but I, I was wondering, like, if like maybe this conversation could help uh, um, uh, understand my myself better to a degree because um, I was. I was growing up in a very religious household, just like you, and mm -hmm. uh, the r religious trauma kind of causes me to have a bias against religion, which I kind of recognize. But overall, well, I, I see... It's good that you can recognize it. It's good that you can recognize it. A lot of people don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just think that maybe like the very concept of faith is maybe too much of a risk to let like i don't believe in like saying outlaw religion totally i think that uh with economic growth and economic uh wealth spread around well enough um people can be more educated and will naturally gravitate towards atheism or secular values at least if, even if they don't totally drop off their religions they might like practice the ritual like they do in Japan where they hmm. keep the religious ritual, but they don't, most people don't actually believe in the superstitious nonsense. They just do it as a thing to bring people together. And um, I think if religion could take on that form, if it could be closer to that, I'd be much more fine with it. Um, but as it is now, I think I, I'm on a stance where, uh, religion should probably be abandoned and as a relic of the past, something that is kind of a side effect of human uh, human uh, flaws or whatever. Um, well, okay, so there's thinking. a couple things I could say there. Um, I, I don't remember the exact context of the, the, the quote um, that you were saying about, like, science being wrong about things. I mean, it is true, though, that science um, is uh, – science, quote-unquote, is – you know, has been incorrect about things in the past. I don't think that that's a controversial statement. Um, I think that people um, who use that to try and justify uh, faith in God um, are not engaging um, in good faith with the flaws of science. I think they're just simply trying to make a simple distinction. But I don't think um, a simple distinction functions well in this particular use. I think that's kind of a sleight of hand. Um, I do think it's important to be able to... Um, in fact, I, I think that, like... Um, I think it's important to uh, be able to recognize um, the the way that science is ultimately subject to um, you know human discretion. Um, I I tend to be um, 
something of uh, a bit a bit suspicious of uh, like hyper uh, uh, empiricists and hyper objectivist people not objectivists as in the philosophy but people who are who who see themselves as continually seeking objective truth because not all things can be um, founded on uh, you know objective premises like um, there is there is still issues with that, that have to ultimately come down to a value judgment um, so basically what I'm saying is that like. Uh, people who just kind of say like it's science bitch like that kind of thing is is not an effective approach when science can be flawed and also science can be subject to human biases i mean a great example of this is um the way that medical institutions and accepted science has evolved on um on trans people um and also there's there are some uh areas where you can't um, where you can't rely purely on science um, in order to make a moral or ethical judgment. An example of this, again, I'll use trans people as an example. Um, trans people, um, whether we called them that or not, but something to that, uh, to that form existed before there was any science um, proving, quote unquote, that they existed. Um, and they still needed and deserved rights um, and were correct to say, no, I am, I am... Uh, I don't have any data or research to prove to you that I uh, am trans or that I would be happy living this way, um, but I know it to be true because this is part of my experience. Um, and, uh, you know, you can't, so you can't just rely on sort of like scientific data purely to go, oh, well, th these are people who have real needs and their, their, their claims about themselves and their experience should be taken seriously. So that's usually that's I would imagine that was probably something like what I was talking about. Um, as for um, the topic of faith, which you you brought up, um, I think that uh, faith is a very complicated topic. Religious belief itself is incredibly complicated and varied. Um, one thing that I find frustrating um, when engaging with a lot of um, anti-theists especially but atheists sometimes generally uh online is a inability to a engage with religious belief that doesn't resemble their like pre-programmed en enemies um i noticed this a lot with christianity where um people will be attempting you know an, an anti-theist or whatever will be attempting to engage in a religious debate with somebody um and they will keep recurring to they will keep returning to arguments that only really work against christianity or only work against religious beliefs that sort of assert a single central deity. And uh, I think that's flawed. Um, there are many different types of religious belief, um, and some types of religious belief are, um, in my, at least in my opinion, don't seem to impede any type of sort of um, rational or philosophical um, uh, achievement. A great example of this is um, um, Baruch Spinoza, um, who was a, a incredibly incredibly intelligent and and um, and influential uh, philosopher who was who believed in God but believed in a model of God um, wherein his belief was more or less that God was the fundamental uh, makeup of the universe um, and a lot of people a lot of atheists are incapable of engaging with that type of religious belief. Um, uh, and and I feel like that's flawed. And I also think that sometimes there's a assumption to basically, or there's these sort of jumps that are made to say, oh, well, any religious belief naturally leads you to bad conclusions. And I don't think that that's necessarily true. I don't think there's enough substance, uh, sub substantive argument to prove that. I do think certain types of religious belief and also certain types of religious practice um, can lead you to bad outcomes. Hmm. Well, see, here's the thing. Um, most of history has kind of proven that religion doesn't really lead to good outcomes when it comes to ra to uh, ob observations of reality. Um, like when you brought up the trans thing, um, sure, they probably didn't really address trans people for the longest time, probably because, you know, psychology is a very much a new science and uh, the scientific method uh as we know it is kind of new in of itself the way that we have it developed now and uh when we make moral or, or judgments about reality uh based on nothing that isn't uh objectively uh observed 
Mm-hmm. Like, how do you know it's true? Why don't you just say, I don't know? It, like, well, okay, if you so don't... I, on the, uh, to, to discuss trans issues real quick, um, it's actually not true that, like, science was this, the, the, the singular liberator of trans people. In fact, numerous religions around the world recognized the existence of something akin to trans people um, long before they were documented by science. Um, which, so I, I think this is something that, that atheists also fail on sometimes. Well, it is true that science has been used to be able to deliver certain breakthroughs for trans people um, via like the development of medicine, which obviously I'm very much in support of. I'm not an anti-science person. Um, uh, native, native religions, um, uh, Hinduism, um, Buddhism, all of these, uh, these are three different uh, you know, religious, uh, obviously native religions are a very broad thing, but I'm just sort of, for the purpose of simplicity here, um, summarizing them, numerous native religions um, had concepts of, of transness or something akin to it. The two-spirit is one that comes to mind um, in First Nations and certain Native American belief systems, where while it's not structured in the exact same way as trans people, it is translated very similar to um, the trans experience. So religions were able to accommodate and incorporate trans people even before they were acknowledged or recognized by science. And on the converse, um, while science has sometimes offered um, solutions or things that have made the trans experience better, they have also done the opposite, which is that science has been used to uh, demonize, pathologize, and bind trans people. Um, For example, um, I mean, the history of trans trans access to healthcare in America is a perfect example of this. Um, where depending on what the prevailing theory is and what the biases are baked into that theory, um, you know, trans people could be either considered a, uh, you know, a naturally occurring phenomenon that can be assisted in their uh, development uh, and, and, you know, thriving as a person, or they can be seen as a pathological element that needs to be quote unquote cured. Um, Mm. And those, 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 those answers are, um, science can't give you the correct way to view that. Um, it just can't. Um, that ends up being a philosophical question. And so in that regard, like, I think it's a mistake to, to pit science and religion against each other on that regard, because some religions did actually uh, build roles into their belief system and into their culture that was for perfectly accepting of trans people. Christianity uh, historically did not. Um, but, See, yeah. Um... See, when you bring up uh, the fact the way scientists used to view trans people back in those days, did, are you sure it was the science or was it the Western cultural view, point of view that was influencing their biases against the science that, are, that was making them come up with? And on top of that, with the fact that the scientific method during those days wasn't as well developed as it is now. Um, uh, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to separate those, right? Because at the end of the day, um, science can only report uh, facts, and it can't tell you what to do with those facts. And those facts, and there is no factual answer to like what the right decision, uh, it, you know, what the correct decision is uh, with regard to how to handle a group of people. Um, this is a recurring, um, this is a recurring issue. Um, you know, also like this is an, you could, you could even take this off of just trans people and talk about like eugenics more, more generally. Um, eugenics is often a flashpoint for this problem because uh, people can say, oh, well now we can diagnose a, uh, an, an illness, but science can't tell you what the correct answer is of what to do about that. You know what I mean? Or whether it should even be considered an illness at all. There's no scientific answer to that. It's a philosophical and social question, which is why I'm saying that, like, um, it's not so simple as deferring to science in all things. Um, and it's not so simple as uh, sort of just denouncing, um, you know, faith or religion as the root of all evil, because people equipped with um, non-religious people um, equipped with certain scientific knowledge can come to horrend- horrendous and, and evil conclusions. Um, and that's because science can't give you like a moral answer for things. It can only equip you in, you know, to sort of with, with tools to then go from there, have more information and perhaps make a more informed conclusion. But it's also subject to human biases at the end of the day. Um, yeah. So, uh, 
I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's as simple as just, you know, science versus religion um, in all things. And I don't think uh, one thing that I hear anti-theists refer, you know, repeat a lot is that sort of like religion is uniquely bad. You even you even did it a little bit here, although your argument was a little different. You said that we can look at history and see that um, religion has been bad for the world. But I think that's a very difficult argument to actually make especially when you consider that um, the world has secularized over the last 200 years. And in the last 200 years, we have seen by pure numbers the most horrific human-caused mass, mass death effects of all all time. Um, like, uh, you But know, crime has gone down. Well, cr but that doesn't mean anything, right? Crime. Like violent crime has gone, like, the, and plus in countries I'm sorry. where... I'm sorry. Crime I'm sorry. Is, uh, crime is 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 de is a totally contingent um, category that's defined by the nation. In some nations right now, it is criminal to be gay. Um, you can't. Okay, just, so it's very difficult to just appeal to crime generally. Um, well, let me rephrase that. Then just just violence overall, especially in like the nor nor um, in Norway. And in Japan, okay. where secularism is on the rise, violent crime is like, or not crime, but I mean, you know, uh, just overall violence is kept at a at a down low, and uh, it's not. I feel it's like not this necessarily might be, like it might be lacking in 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 supportive data to to be able to say that that's the only reason why that's the case. Um, there's well, been a lot of things. There's I'm like not a saying lot of it's the only reason. Recently. Yeah, but I mean, it, so so here's what I mean though, like. Um, so let me give you an example of 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 uh, of um, like okay so um, genocides. We can acknowledge that that genocides or genocide similar uh, mass death events. If we don't want to get we don't we don't have to spend the whole time split splitting hairs on the definition of genocide for the purpose of this argument. But horrific mass mass death events um, have been. Um, influenced by non or have been enacted by um secular entities um and in fact arguably like um arguably that's been like the main actor that's engaged in these um in recent memory like the like i said mass death events like state enacted genocides um are often undertaken by um secular states or at least states that claim to be secular so i don't think it's 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 fair to um to say that like Oh well, you know, if we look at history, that means we can we can come to the conclusion that religion is bad. When um, in the age of secular states of the liberal democracy, um, we have seen a plethora of uh, of of nightmarish state violence undertaken. I mean, um, we don't even have to talk about just like people genociding their own populace, like in the case of like um, you know the USSR or or Germany. Um, we could talk about wars, you know what I mean? Wars that are enacted, the, the Iraq war, um, devastation of millions of people, over a million people dying um, at the hands of a secular state. So um, while you might, even if we were to grant the idea that like maybe violent crime of certain types has gone down, other types of violence have seemingly been empowered in this era of, um, you know, uh, secular quote unquote governments. And I would argue that's because there isn't as clean of a distinction between a secular ideology and a religious ideology. Um, because my argument in this conversation is pretty much always that um, religion in and of itself is not the problem, but the problem is instead certain types of, um, certain components of certain types of belief that can, that can affect both secular and religious people um, and have historically. Okay. So, um, you know, there's another point I wanted to bring up, sure, um, sure. which is the, the fact that, um, you ever notice that religion encourages authoritarianism? You're literally bowing down and worshiping. Like, don't you think the very act of worship is, a, is anti-progressive, anti, uh, against, uh, anarchy or the, or the foundations of what most progressives believe in today? Like, I know there are religious progressives, but at the same time, like, don't you think if they were to be really rational about it, wouldn't they, like, have the same attitude towards their God, even if it's not Christianity? Like, say, like, pagans or, or whatever, like, they still worship or do, like, things to, like, I don't know, 
bow down and recognizing an authority above them like isn't that inherently I bad that. um i mean see this is this is one of those arguments that um this is one of those arguments that makes me think that your primary engagement has been with christianity and that you haven't actually spent as much time um uh, engaging in good faith with other religious beliefs um there are religious practices that do not um that in fact reject uh bowing down to authority um, there are religious practices that don't believe in gods in the Christian sense or or even in the like Hellenic pagan sense. Um, I mean, of course, the example that I already brought up, I think, serves just fine that um, Spinoza, um, one of the most, like I said, one of the most influential thinkers uh, of the last, you know, what, 200 years he was in the 1800s, um, you know, considered himself very religious, um, but uh, believed in a type of God that you could not be be a uh, you know you could not it could not be an authority over uh, over you because of the nature of that type of god that god, the god was not a central um, figure who you bow down to and there's plenty of religions that um, do contain authoritarianism but there's also plenty that do not um, um, I mean hell like even Buddhism um, now of course it depends on certain sects of Buddhism do incorporate this but Buddhism is a um, massive and highly varied belief and a lot of Buddhism does not have anything to do with um, sort of paying fealty to gods but rather is a is a very internal process of um, of uh, of sort of um, gauging with the self and the self's relationship with the world and has very little to do with um, with paying you know homage or worship to a god figure there are of course per types of Buddhism that do um, but but no that's not all types and of course um, if you look into um, animistic beliefs, um, if you're familiar with the term animism, it's basically the belief in spirits and whatever. A lot of those yeah. um, do not, while sometimes they venerate certain spirits, they don't venerate them in a strictly like um, hierarchical <laughs> sense. It's rather a matter of um, we, we pay respect to the, to the spirit of a forest that, that also nourishes us and we are a part of that. And it's not a, a hierarchical type of, of recognition or veneration. So I think that this type of argument um, is applies very uh, narrowly to very specific religions. Um, I think you could make this argument strongly against a lot of Christianity, which uh, Christianity is a re religion that very rarely um, uh, escapes its authoritarian roots. Um, but that's only one religion. And if you're going to try and make the argument that all religion is bad or that all religion or even most of religion encourages this type of behavior, I feel like um, you have to make a better case than just pointing at Christianity. Yeah, I um, it, it, what you're describing sounds a lot like Shintoism, um, where at least in its original form before it became uh, it became uh, mixed in with Confucius and western ideologies which made it more hierarchical so i i do kind of know what you're talking about there i just um i don't know like it seems like the most powerful religions have more of an authoritarian bent uh to them and well, like generally even if of, you um, isn't that kind of sensical um if you think about it that like um it turns out that the religions that um that actively subjugate um, entire states um, would therefore wield certain types of power, that these are religions that are crafted around making power. Um, and also, wouldn't that indicate that the problem isn't necessarily with religion itself, but rather with the structured beliefs of that religion? Um, because to me, like, that's also true about, um, that's also true about, like, uh, like, states generally, right? Like, um, America is a, uh, uh, is a, a so-called democracy that highly values um, extreme, uh, extremely hierarch uh, extremely hierarchical structure internally, both uh, economically, but on a broader scale on the world. America has maintained its position as the superpower of the world through maintaining a military. It's a sort of that's the ideology at play there, regardless of even its connection to religion. So just, yeah, uh, yeah, I just can't help but. Um... Think of like Matt Delahunty. I, I I don't mean to uh, probably shouldn't have brought his name up, but oh, Matt Delahunty. Uh, I tend to like him. Um, um, 
but yeah, like I, I tend to think of him a lot because he keeps on asking the same question. How do you know something is true? Okay. And every time it keeps on coming back to the same answers, you really don't know what, what, like, like when, when he keeps on debating religious people, they keep on going around in circles where they don't want to accept. They don't really know what they think they know, but he's trying to show them that they don't really care about the, if they cared about the truth, then they probably wouldn't have come to the conclusion to the conclusions that they had. And usually those conclusions are that there's a supernatural being in the sky and there's a heaven and a hell and all these other other things and that and even even with animistic religions there's a lot of superstition that comes along with the baggage now well sure i'm not necessarily but, those, but that could but i i and obviously you're this is just this is sort of an appeal to the the listener base of a um, atheist podcast but i feel like if you went around and asked everyday people regardless of their religious position that there are tons of people who have no idea how they know how they really come to truth claims in fact i think a lot of people just never really interrogate that a lot of people live their lives sort of intuiting their way based on what they've been given um and they don't necessarily sit down and think about like how do i know what's true and that's a huge question um the the, the like how you decide what is true is a question that has been um argued for centuries by philosophers and there's many different answers to that question and but i just i just don't think that like that sort of saying well a lot of cr christians don't know this or a lot of religious people don't know well i think that if you asked non-christian people they wouldn't know either a lot of people never think about that so again i don't think it's something that's unique to religion i do th think that certain religious practice um trains people to be more resistant to um critical thought but i think that's one of its like one of the problems when i talk about religion the things that i focus on um and you can actually go back and watch my other videos about atheism um i talk about this frequently um i tend to fixate on as red flags and things that i think are problematic and sort of like really bad and this is not just in religion but also in other forms of belief as well are things like dogmatism um, a dogmatism is a really big one. I think that, uh, that belief systems that promote dogmatic belief, um, which by the way, one of the biggest things that I bring up when I'm talking about dogmatism is also the way that, um, certain like, um, so-called, uh, self-named communist cults of personality have functioned. They have uh, very dogmatic beliefs, even though they're not religious, they're explicitly secular. Um, that's one, uh, uh capital T traditionalism, um, not like just the keeping of certain traditions, but the belief that because something has been done for a long time, it must be valuable. Um, I think that that's a huge warning flag. Once again, I don't think that's unique to religion, though religions um, do tend, a lot of religions do uh, tend to uh, incorporate that type of traditionalism um, for a number of reasons. Um, yeah. Those are two of the big ones that I fix it on when I'm thinking about like, the thing, not just religiosity, not just like the belief in in uh, in something more or whatever, because um, I don't really think that's the core problem. Yeah, and um, sometimes I get a little mixed up um, because I, whenever I'm trying to bring up these discussions with my family, it's hard to not are like sometimes I try to move them on certain issues just so they can be a little bit more open-minded to the sciences and everything. So I try to move them a little bit on, on evolution and stuff like that. And of course they don't budge, but I, it makes it harder when like, I, I do understand what you're talking about. Sometimes it's harder not to argue it from a place of, Oh, well, God's just not real. The end. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it, it can be, a, it's a little bit more nuanced and complicated than that when you're trying to discuss these things, like the facts with other people. And I do notice that, you know, um, Reddit atheists do take sh mental shortcuts like that, where they just say, well, God's not real and you believe in God, therefore you're dumb. The goodbye. Yeah, you know, it's something that <laughs> happens all the time. I mean, but also I just think that like, um, I, I, I think that certain types, like I said, certain types of religious belief will make you run into walls faster than others. Um, uh, like, obviously, um, you know, I came from uh, a evangelical 
background. That's what I grew up in was an evangelical cult. They were extreme. And um, they their whole system was very um, harsh indoctrination of a lot. They utilized a lot of thought terminating cliches. They, they spent a lot of time basically prepping people so that they would um, close their minds to arguments that could threaten the faith. Um, but I just, I don't think that that's exclusive to religion. Um, and so while it is frustrating, I've encountered that exact thing with different types of political ideologies as well, where um, people uh, just seem completely incapable of, of crossing a gulf or being willing to, um, to, to engage with you because they have certain preconceptions or uh, uh, value judgments, like axiomatic values or whatever you want to say. Um, that that sort of make them unwilling to budge or make it impossible for for like a connection to be made, and I think that's a bigger problem than just religion. Um, yeah. But do you think do you think that maybe we could instead of striving to destroy religion, we strive to secularize religion um, to the point to okay, the point so, where it's go ahead. Sorry. To the point where it's like it is in Japan. Not everything's good in Japan. Just I'm just saying I, I like the way they do religion in Japan. That's why I keep on bringing it up. Um, I don't know uh, enough but, about, uh, about Japan, but also, like, <clears throat> didn't they just literally have, um, like, it took yeah, like, that's a why major I'm saying... assassination <laughs> to, like, it took a political assassination um, of, of an ex-prime minister for them to budge on, uh, like, a cult movement that has been flourishing in Japan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, so I don't know if it's I, like, yeah. I, I just, I just like it the way that they tend to secularize religion where they have the practice. They know that these rituals don't actually summon gods or spirits to come and do physical things. It's just something to make you feel good about yourself and the people around you. Um, and that's what I think the true value of uh, religion can be if you separate the superstition and all the dogma behind it. If you just keep um, just just keep the ritual, or I guess, I don't know. Well, I, um, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I can hear where you're coming from. I just don't think it's that simple. Like, um, I mean, there have I mean, even just talking about Japan, I'm like thinking about um, – there's been numerous major cult movements, including like um, there was that the nerve gas cult that did the nerve gas bombings in the um, subway tunnels. Like it's not a that it's not like a I don't know. I don't know that there's been a that type. of I, I feel like religious belief can always pop up given certain conditions. Um, I don't know. Um, do I think that people should be like that? We should we should like encourage people to be more critical. I do and yeah i do believe that very much i think that it's incredibly important for human development generally regardless of what your current starting point is um to encourage people to be critical to be um introspective to be empathetic to be willing to open their mind to new perspectives i think those are like universally good things that help people grow and um become fully re realized human beings um when one of the things that like disturbs me, I guess, when I hear things like, you know, we should destroy religion um, or even like we should secularize is that it, it they, ec they echo um, civilizing projects. They echo colonializing, colonialized projects. The rhetoric that's used um, reminds me one to one of these things. And I mean, this is already something that like um, secular democracies have been engaging in since the the like sort of concept of the liberal democracy existed. And of course, um, liberal democracies never fully separated themselves from their religious roots. Um, American American law, American uh, secular law, sometimes directly traces its roots to formerly existing religious law. They just have removed the references, but to to God in some cases, not even in all cases, but in some cases, but kept the ultimate values, which complicates things even further, right? Um, yeah. One example that I used in the past was talking about how the law that was used to criminalize and genocide um, gay and trans people in Germany, um, can, you can directly trace its, its inception from the, um, from, uh, the, the sort of a whole, from the Holy Empire period uh, of Germany. 
Um, and and it was just it was just basically okay. This law already exists on the book. As we're we've now had a revolution, and we're moving to a you know we've we've overthrown the monarchy. We're now doing a secular democracy, but we need laws, so we're going to incorporate laws that were on the books prior. Remove references to God, but the values are ultimately the same. So you have a law on the books in a secular democracy that doesn't refer to God, but that still criminalizes homosexuality, and hmm. um, the science didn't exist to be able to contest that on any sort of scientific ground. And the person who attempted to um, was uh, driven out of the country uh, after his uh, institute was burnt down by the Nazis. So um, yeah, it's kind of complicated, right? Um, when I mm -hmm. hear people talk about like secularizing and whatever, well, I don't think it's that simple. I don't think there's a flip, you uh, like a switch you can flip that just says, now we are going to secularize you without engaging in essentially <laughs> some sort of horrific nightmare project. Um, well, yeah, so, yeah. I I just think that maybe, you know, when I bring up anti-theism, I try not to be how I used to be where, you know, I'm just an asshole, just shouting at everybody. <laughs> um, but when I bring these things up, I... I have a tendency to treat it like, well, I don't think making it outlawed to like, I don't believe in outlawing religion or anything like that or forcing people to do a certain thing. I just think maybe just naturally uh, when socialism gets enacted, I don't know how else you want to put it, or if you want to uh, spread the wealth a little bit more, bring economic prosperity to the world, that the world will naturally start to secularize itself. And maybe uh, I, I think I, I seem like you said, when I bring up like Norway and stuff like that, it seems to be that a good example of that where, you know, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but because they have more wealth redistribution and better social safety nets, um, they're able to bring people to a higher level of consciousness and to be able to educate people more. Uh, more I don't know. These these all seem like. um with all due respect, somewhat woo claims. Like, I don't know what a higher level of consciousness means. I don't know. Oh, oh. We don't, I, like, uh, I don't, there's a lot sorry. of things. Sorry. You need and, to like, rephrase it. I mean, it's fine, but it's like, it's just like, uh, like, this happens, this is something that happens frequently, which is that um, ideological terms get basically washed of their religious connotations um, on the surface, but ultimately maintain a religious, um, a religious, um, like, function which is like this idea of like um, universal uh, education, like raising people to like a new standard. But we all also can acknowledge that like education uh, functions and has its own ideological biases. This is actually something that um, one of the, one of the sort of infamous memes of my, of my channel, of people accusing me of like opposing education, which is not true. Um, was a, a conversation I engaged in in the past about um, risks and issues with mandatory public schooling. Um, uh, public schooling in America has an ideological purpose. It serves the economy um, and it affects every level of education. People aren't just taught facts generally. They are taught facts in a context and they are taught facts in a direction. And the American educational experience largely for the vast majority of people um, involves in basically teaching them what they need to do to do a job and, and very little else. Um, and also in the process, teaching them that that's basically an okay way for things to be. And when you say, well, is that really the only way for things to be? They go, well, it doesn't matter because um, data shows that if we educate kids on how to work well as a cog in a machine, they'll work better as a cog in a machine and they'll be slightly happier as a result. So it's a self-reinforcing problem. And this isn't the only thing, right? Like um, education isn't, isn't just a... a um, invocation. It's not just an an empty uh, thing. It's a it has uh, it has um, characteristics to it, right? Um, so I don't know. Um, when people talk about Norway and all these countries, I also like I also go, oh well, like these countries have have um, huge issues, like the fact that like oh yeah, um, their entire economy is buoyed by. Um, a, a history of colonial uh, holdings and also a dominance of certain avenues of trade. Um, these aren't like, they don't stand alone. They like to sort of brush under the rug that their entire, you know, so-called, you know, almost 
sometimes people almost sound like they're talking about a utopia. There are utopian existences buoyed by existing ongoing exploitation of countries that they subjugated and dominated in the past um, that has not been resolved. So I don't know. Um, I don't think that like educating people uh, simply just like just educating people well. in and of itself is a is is an answer. I mean, and also, um, I I think that that education can also serve as a um, I mean, hell, education, the push for education was initially ca a project carried out by the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church used education as a way to control entire peoples. Um, education as we know it um, now was a project of Catholic churches. That's why in a lot of places, especially in Canada, it's very, very obvious in Canada and South America, schools that exist, even schools that have secularized, um, were founded and operated originally by the Catholic Church. And they were educating people. They were even teaching science and stuff, but they had a ideological goal. They were melding. They were melding a population with the goal of of culturally influencing them. So I think we have to um, be careful about just sort of simply saying education is always the answer. Um, I do think that um, I think that knowledge is very powerful. I think that um, that learning is is learn teaching people how to learn is very important. But education is more complicated because um, you have to yeah. decide. Who is deciding the education and to what end? And if you look in the modern world, the answer is uh, to is is almost universally. If you're talking about Western democracy, the purpose of education is to create a workforce. I mean, they'll, yeah. that's literally the explicit the explicit purpose of American education system is to create a, a capable workforce, not to teach people, yeah. not to uh, to grow knowledge or anything like that. That's just a byproduct. The goal is to create a capable workforce. Well, when I bring up education, I mean a, a general social safety net to bring people to a better awareness of reality where they're not so poor that they have to work all the time just to survive, like what's going on now in America uh, with the minimum wage not being raised adequately. So, and uh, a lot of these people, when they go poor and homeless, they turn to religious organizations because they're the only ones that are opening any kind of services for them. And uh, the same goes for prisons. Uh, a lot of these services have religion infiltrated all over the place in America. Of course. Yeah. And uh, no doubt about and that. And like, and because of that, and be if if we just had, well, they um, don't. But hold on, we should be better clear. social safety net. We should be clear. They don't have religion. Um, uh, uh, in, incorporated. Um, uh, they have very specifically um, Christianity. Um, there is extremely ex an extreme minority of any other religion, but either Catholicism or evangelical Christianity who have representation in these types of organizations. Um, it's you're not you're not going to go to a uh, you're not going to be you know getting um, targeted once you're in prison by a uh, you know, Hindu uh, or Sikh, um, you know, recovery program. Most of the time, it's it's ninety nine percent of the time going to be yeah. uh, Catholic or evangelical Christian. Both of which have, um, even though they hate each other and have certain different values, they functionally more or less believe the same essential moral code. So yeah, yeah. I um, but you know, I I just just generally think that when society is treated better and we have better social safety nets that it brings people to a better place mentally. Yeah, I overall. don't disagree with you. Um I I I abs in fact I I agree with you with the idea that like um that like people thriving and not being like living like um you know hand to mouth like um is is a is a better state for people to be in. I mean that's that's kind of the the whole the whole thrust behind, you know, communism and what Marx really wanted to do was was to try and figure out how to um how to uh how to influence a change that would allow people to um have more time to think to be fuller humans that our system but keep in mind he was also grappling with um he was also grappling with a uh an a largely secularly powered economic system um or at least it claims to be but it's never that's clean it's never so clean to separate these things. I think that like the that capitalism, um, ha while heavily influenced in so many ways by Christianity, 
um, also claims to be secular. It claims to be beyond Christianity. Um, but yeah, I don't disagree with you that these things are good. Um, but again, I think we're kind of talking about a different thing than just religion anymore, right? We're talking about like um, allowing, like finding ways to allow people to to thrive and to have room to breathe so that they can actually be thinking full beings as opposed to just like slaves for an economic machine. Yeah, and when they're not slaves or just slaves for an economic machine, they have a tendency to become more secular or to become, at, at the very least, much more scientifically minded or logically uh, inclined to behave uh, differently than how they are now. Um, America has uh, the worst uh, uneducation rate and the worst... Um, some of the worst, our highest crime rates are amongst the developed nations, as far as I know. You can probably correct me on that. Like, maybe there is a worse country or not. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure but... about those statistics. I, I don't have them in front of me. Um, but also, like, um, with regard to, um, like, religion. So, okay. Um, I, I don't know. Um, to, to address that, I don't, I don't know. In America, yeah, it does make sense that, like, in a country where... Um, in a country where there's aggressive religious recruitment by Christianity, um, that people who no longer have to rely on those those like sort of binding Christian structures would probably um, become more secular if they were not in a position um, to have to rely on them. But also at the same time, um, it's kind of a self fulfilling prophecy because like in America, um, the like pre prevailing economic ideology is. Uh, it's sort of laissez-faire, um, trickle-down Reaganomics has been like the predominant um, economic model for some time. And that model explicitly says we should basically leave all charity um, to uh, individuals. And when they mean individuals, they mean the pre-existing status quo, which happens to be churches because of historical precedent. I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know that we have the information to know whether in a different context that would still be be the same. Um, but I certainly imagine that in a different context, people would at the very least um, would not just uh, gravitate only to Christianity. Um, that if even if they didn't, even if it wasn't just like a an approach to secularism, that they would probably choose religions a little more freely. Uh, it just so happens that in this country, if you're poor, um, sometimes the only people willing to feed you are Christians. Um, yeah. And that usually comes with a, uh, it usually comes with an asterisk. Not always. Um, this so is something I brought think... up. I, I brought this up in my conversations about atheism multiple times, yeah. which is that a lot of atheists, um, they can acknowledge, they're like, oh yeah, well, you know, um, you know, Christians just like wait outside of prisons to recruit new people who, who have, who are marginalized. And then I'm like, okay, but you just acknowledge that. What are you doing about that? And then a lot of atheists will just go, well, it's not my, you know, just because I'm criticizing this doesn't mean I have to do anything about it. And that's true. You don't really, but also the problem is not going to go away on its own. Um, if only yeah. Christian organizations are the ones stepping up to actually provide for people, then you're only just going to keep getting people who are rel reliant on the church. And yeah. even, you know, a government safety net is um, is fine, but but just sort of saying it in the abstract doesn't make it happen, right? Like in America, yeah. there's a huge resistance to the expansion of the welfare state, which means that churches still maintain dominance over being able to provide for poor people, which means poor people are reliant on churches, which means they are going to be converted at a higher rate for emotional reasons and for practical reasons. You're not going to yeah. um, bite the hand that feeds you. No, it's not rational. So. so. So do you think we could agree that maybe Christianity is the problem <laughs> or no, not exactly. I'm, I'm kind of kidding, but um, maybe like Abrahamic faiths are pretty much one of the main issues because like it has, not only is it backed by the major colonial powers in the world, but it also encourages an authoritarian view of the universe where everything is like directly tied to one being all powerful being if one all powerful being existed i would do anything i could to try and kill him and take it his power for myself and then make the universe how i wanted to see it i damn, don't know straight like, out of, damn straight out damn straight out of the fucking golden compass where are you uh, uh <laughs> what's his name over here uh lord lord astrea or whatever his name is can't remember um but no i mean i don't know i don't i don't know um i 
I don't think it's as it's as easy as that. I do think that there are huge issues with Christianity, and I bring them up often. I mean, I I I am very willing to trash on Christianity and also to just d disassemble their arguments because I do think that like um, evangelical Christianity and also Catholic Catholic Christianity are both like explicitly um, imperial projects. Um, uh, evangelical Christianity is a little bit harder for people to understand how it functions, but it piggybacks off of existing um, democracies. And and in America, the most the currently like most popular form of Christianity um, is evangelical Christianity that is leaning increasingly towards Christian nationalism. In fact, me and my partner Doe have been uh, mostly Doe right recently because I stream all the time, but. Um, has been doing research into um, popular churches in America, and the Christian nationalism is almost universal. The idea that basically Christians, um, you know, church, these church leaders are constantly churning out to the most popular churches in America. The idea that Christians need to gain control of the government and make this a nation that is cr a Christian nation. And they will basically say, we believe in religious freedom, but you have to, you can practice your religion however you want, but you ultimately have to acknowledge that we get to make the rules. Um, because this is a Christian nation, and that is the most popular thing here. So these are, you know, these are imperial religions, and I do oppose them. But um, I don't know if it's as simple as just saying Christianity itself is the problem. Um, I think that um, that the mentality of of the the sort of fascistic mentality, the mentality of domination, can come in many many uh, different types of clothes. It dresses itself in many ways. And I don't know that Christianity simply uh, can be denounced as the only problem, although it is absolutely in America um, one of the main vehicles for the growth of a fascistic worldview and a fascistic uh, you know, structure of society. So I, 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 I am engaged con continually and do on this channel in uh, criticizing um, American Christianity and especially conservative Christianity. Um, but I just don't know if you can simply say, oh, Christianity is the problem. Because I think that if we were to, if Christianity was to somehow disappear tomorrow and just nobody believed in it anymore for some reason or another, um, that I think that fascism would find other clothes to wear. Um, people's desire to dominate, people's desire to, um, to scapegoat would find new clothing to wear. And I think that we should be better at, we should learn to target the root issues and not the clothes that's being worn, if that makes sense. So I seem to think I I see where you're coming from a little bit more. Oh, uh, sorry. I, th I seem to think that, you know, when it comes to observing reality, um, would you say that it's appropriate not just to use science, but um, any kind of method that works for the moment, kind of like... I don't know. I, I keep on bringing up Bruce Lee in my head. He's like, take what is useful and add, like, take what is useful, subtract what is useless to you, and then add what is essentially your own. Um, do you think that through through that lens, are you are you kind of looking at reality through that lens right now when you say that, well, science doesn't have all the answers, so how about philosophy? Or maybe philosophy doesn't have all the answers, so what about, uh, I don't know, like... Well, Sociology I, I just don't know or if it's something. That, I don't know if it's as simple as saying like science. I think that that's an, an unhelpful abstraction because science isn't a single thing. There are many different types of science. There is many different interpretations of how science is supposed to be done. Science itself is a, is a huge nebulous social structure. Um, but also, I just think it's a simple fact that science, even in its like sort of ideal form, can't give you all the answers. Again, um, science can tell you uh, how much of something exists or can tell you um, certain types of knowledge, but it can't tell you what to do with that knowledge. That is always going to be the realm of philosophy and ethics. Um, my, my approach generally is just that um, we don't and can't know everything um, and, uh, and ne we never will. It, literally, it is literally impossible. It is actually unironical, unironically impossible to know everything. There is no such thing as omniscience. And um, as a result of that, uh, uh, we have to be able to engage in multiple forms of thought. And I think it's important to not delude ourselves um, with the idea that a single like method of, of gathering certain ty types of truth 
is like the only method of truth gathering that exists. Um, uh, you know, scientific empiricism is very useful for gathering certain types of knowledge, but again, without a being able to understand what to do with that knowledge, you can become a monster very quickly. And people have throughout all of history. Um, in fact, it happens so constantly now um, that it's like it's almost become background noise to us, that we forget just how horrifically bloody the last like 200 years of, of world superpowers actually is. That, that like this era is, is, is like one of the, is, is perhaps the only era in the entire history of humanity where um, like single world powers falling under a handful of people have been able to just delete entire populations of people if they so desire it. Even in like the worst periods of like medieval history, there's no one has ever wielded that amount of concentrated power. Um, and of course, that's not even getting into the nuclear issue, which is that if you consider nukes, the ability to erase the entirety of human of human existence, all of our history, all at once, currently sits under the uh, thumb of Joe Biden mm -hmm. and Vladimir Putin. Yeah, that is terrifying to think about. And that never has existed in the past. There was no ability. That ability didn't even exist. So I, I think that, like, um, with all of that taken in mind, um, it we can't, we don't have, I don't think that it's correct or useful to basically um, uh, to just say, oh, well, science is the answer. Because it isn't. It isn't the only thing. We, we have to engage with a process of, of ethics. We have to engage with a process of uh, of of ethical truth finding um whether it's via philosophy or religion is a big 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 question and i just don't think it's correct to uh outright uh say i am never i am not going to consider any um religious thought whatsoever as valid um dogmatically because uh, uh because I, I think religion is bad i think that people who do that fail to actually define why religion is bad and usually end up replicating the mistakes of the people that they supposedly hate. Um, yeah. So, uh, I don't think that like, I, like uh, my mind is not open to like Christian, uh, dogmatism, but, uh, I have throughout the course of my life, there have been lessons that I have learned that have been valuable from Christianity as a whole. Um, same from, other religions uh, there has been aspects of buddhism that have been that I, that I feel have helped me understand something better not dogmatically but as a way of understanding the world and being able to look from another person's perspective that doesn't mean that i think that like like i said i i, I oppose dogmatism i oppose hyper traditionalism um you know for the and for, superstition and and yeah superstition i think that like i mean i i always feel like people don't have a a a real good definition of what they mean when they say superstition, but yeah, superstitious my mystical belief to me, um, is not useful and also, um, uh, like, uh, doesn't seem valuable. Um, to me, it usually seems to be, um, largely predicated on, um, unjustified fears. But again, I think it depends on what people mean when they say superstition, but yes, generally I don't oppose, I oppose, uh, sort of unqualified superstition. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm totally, um, I'm totally open to what you have to say. I haven't totally made up my mind how I feel about the issue of religion as a whole and how it affects and should, what we should do with it. Um, I, I just kind of like wanted to kind of call in and see, like try and test out my, um, the, my thoughts that are kind of going around my head and see, uh, how it plays out with another human being because where i'm at i don't have a lot of people to talk to so oh, that's uh it uh, I, yeah, I, I i certainly uh i certainly would um encourage you to uh you know conti ten continue to inquire um and and i guess my only advice to you would be you know advice that i would have given to myself as a as a you know when i used to be an anti-theist which is um be careful that you don't replicate the mistakes of former belief systems by um by sort of over like oversimplifying or um or wrongly categorizing uh hmm. religious belief i made this mistake a lot when i was younger the like the like religion is basically all reskins of christianity when it really really is not and the more that i've um the more that i've looked into it the more that i've realized oh my god like actually it's so far from the truth um 
Hell, I've even been reading recently, although I've, I've admittedly, uh, uh, I, I, I've fallen off of my recent reading, but I'm, I'm planning on getting back into it, reading a book called, um, oh, what's it? It's Brent Nongbri is the writer. I always forget the title. Uh, Before Religion. Wow, that's such a simple one. Why do I always forget that? It's uh, Before Religion by Brent Nong Nongbri, and his argument is actually that the concept of religion as it is used in a modern sense is um, completely bunk um, and ahistorical and is actually a sort of conveniently developed structure uh, that was influenced specifically by um, central like central or uh, religious figures like the Catholic Church, um, that they influence the modern conception of religion generally um, in order to basically uh, give uh, give legal advantage to themselves over time. And I found his argument to be incredibly compelling um, that that like even early Christians, the way that they talk about religion and religious belief, that this concept of religion as we understand it now, he especially takes problem with the idea of the world religions, which if you think about, you, what do you, when I say the word the world religions, what do you think of? Uh, think of Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism. Islam. Uh, Islam, yeah. Yep. He argues that this is a... a um, ridiculous and unjust simplification of the actual beliefs of people around the world and that it, it is used to basically um to basically carve the world into camps that don't actually exist um and that it plays to the advantage of the camp that has the most economic and uh social power currently which is of course christianity um so yeah i would uh, that book might even be very interesting to you um, it's called Before Religion by Brent Nongbri. It's highly cited. Um, yeah, I, I found it to be a very, um, a very, very informative read so far. And I'm not done with it, so I can't claim that I've read the entire thing, but uh, it's been incredibly thought-provoking so far. Um, and I found his case to be very interesting, that the way that people talk about religion is, is a, is a non-starter because it assumes basically a Christian framework um, a, a centralized Christian framework, when in reality that's not how belief actually functions um, and that it operates in our world differently and that we would do better to acknowledge how it actually works as opposed to the way that it is asserted to work. Yeah, I have a, a, a pagan friend who's uh, trans and he uh, introduced me to a lot of uh, religious beliefs that I wasn't oh, totally aware of before, mm -hmm. uh, introducing me to the concept of... Um, the way you worship your God they are their gods is a little different mm -hmm. in that instead of bowing down and praying, you there's just, Oh, here's some food. I'll trade it for this. And that's, it's basically like making a purchase almost mm -hmm. instead of, um, so yeah, I kind of, um, kind of open, opened my mind a little bit to what, how religion can be incorporated into society without it bringing in the baggage from, uh, colonial religions. Uh, I just think that maybe, I don't know, we might be better off if we can just have a more secular point of view. Um, but that, I don't know. I, I, I'm still trying to totally figure it out. I think that, I mean, just I from tend what to I encourage people in that direction as well. I mean, I, I myself am an atheist. I don't find, like, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in spirits or anything like that. I will encourage people to consider that perspective, especially because I believe that, um, you know, having a, a sort of non-religious perspective in that regard allows me to more freely consider the ideas of many different sources without, like, having to marry myself to a specific uh, set of doctrines. Um, but also, like, I just, um, I recognize that there are people who are um, religious who would probably whose uh, values would align with mine very very well and they just have a slightly different calculation on one front so I don't know um, like I said my focus tends not to be on religion as the core root issue but rather like I said dogmatism traditionalism um, you know anti-intellectualism is another one uh, people who just like are, oh, yeah. are against um, be, you know uh, like again against critical thought that are against being able to question things um, you know, hyper authoritarianism. These are the things that I fixate on. Um, and the reason for that is just because I haven't found a convincing argument that really says that religion is the problem. I don't think it is. I think that other, I think 
ideology is as much of a problem as religion, but everybody's got an ideology, and if that's the problem, if it, you can't eliminate it, yeah. you have a, or at least I don't know any way to really. Um, yeah, but, and w yeah. when I bring up religion as being the problem, I'm not saying it's the problem. I'm just saying it's like it, it probably incur it inherently encourages authoritarian issues or superstitious thinking or all those other things that most of us, especially in your audience, wouldn't really agree with or like. Um, and I, I don't know what a society exactly that is uh, uh, communistic, at least the world that we would like to see, how would that would view on religion? How would that change religion? How would people practice religion differently? Um, we just don't know. So Yeah, I think it's uh, very hard to know for sure. And uh, I guess, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's very hard to know what the world will look like um, as people liberate themselves um, from, you know, structures that are dominating them. But for me, I, I, I guess the way that I look at it is that I'm more concerned with the liberation. And I, I imagine that there are some people um, who are able to, uh, I, in fact, I know for a fact that there are people who are able to come to um, effective liberatory um, positions and self-liberation even whilst being religious um, and if that's true um, I, I don't know how you would even go about proving whether or not the religiosity impeded or helped them um, when I read certain thinkers who are um, who were essential to the development of the ideas that I believe in the most or the things that I strive for the most and I find they're oh they have religious beliefs that makes me go well maybe there's something else at play here Maybe there's a different problem that's not the religion itself. Maybe religion is um, can be a tool uh, in some regards for good and doesn't necessarily have to universally be bad. And also, again, like I said, Brent Nonbury before religion, the definition of religion is also incredibly important in this uh, in all of this because obviously, uh, if if we want to argue that like the only type of religion that counts is centralized organized religion then yeah you're going to find a lot of you're going to find a lot of opposition to that from me because i think that um centralized religions um strongly trend towards authoritarian structures and towards anti-intellectualism and towards dogmatic belief systems that's how they become organized um they they canonize a central doctrine um through one means or another and then convert people to it and yeah, so if it's yeah. if you if that's how you define it, then obviously I will agree with mm. that position more. Yeah, I um I hope we get to see this world uh, change into well how we want to see, so we can have the answers to these questions before global warming hits us and kills us all. It's but us I don't now, know. Man. Yeah, we're gonna have to. I mean, that's gonna be a whole. That's gonna change the game the game field. But yeah. Um, I, I do think that um, as a matter of uh, as a matter of 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 efficacy and uh, that that atheists would uh, be more effective in the world um, if they were less fixated on religion itself and instead tried to deal with the um, the results of the most problematic forms of religion and that's yeah. just my advice to atheists generally I think a lot of atheists um, um, they basically have taken an opiate of their own, which is more or less Reddit, that they feel like I've come to a personally enlightened position and my enlightenment alone makes the world a better place, but it doesn't necessarily. Um, and as you sit there, you know, as people sit there enlightened by their own intelligence, um, the, the religious factions, heinous, actually unironically evil, um, you know, religious factions uh, like, you know, the Southern Baptist Church and and um, you know, cult mm -hmm. that I grew up in are currently engaging in highly manipulative practice that uh, uh, that you don't have to even denounce the entirety of religion in order to engage with. You can engage with denouncing their specific belief systems, their practices, their actions. Um, and I think that it would be more effective if most, most atheists spent more of their time doing that than, uh, you know, I don't know, trying to prove that religion universally is bad. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I also like, um, like to think about what would an organization of, uh, of, um, atheists that, you know, help people in a lot of the ways that these Christian organizations, like, I, I don't know how that would look like, you know, you kind of bring up, well, why aren't atheists doing this? I don't see you 
out there doing it. Like, I just don't know what that would look like. I I've actually thought of starting something like that. I just have no idea how to organize people or how to, yeah, it's a hard, uh, that's, that's the hard road. And of course that's, that is the challenge. Um, because, um, one of the advantages that churches have is that they have a thousand years of doing it. They have structures in place that you don't have to question that just tell you how to do it, which is why a lot of people fall into it. So yeah, we, you know, if you care about this kind of stuff, there's tough work, there's tough thinking to be done. There's a lot of uh, hard thinking and, 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 and experimentation to be done. And of course, there are secular organizations that do really well. I mean, personally, um, you know, I draw a lot of inspiration from, um, you know, uh, um, historically anarchistic organization, um, you know, people, who, how anarchists find ways to um, help one another um, and build a non, non, you know, a non hierarchical structures that are very effective at getting people the help that they need and not leaving and, 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 and therefore liberating them to be able to resist any form of domination, whether it's religious, state, ethnic, whatever. Um, I think that there's that's part of the reason why I find um, anarchist philosophy so interesting personally. Um, yeah, and a great example, Rhodes brings up in chat, Food Not Bombs is an exactly one of those organizations. Food Not Bombs is a, um, is, it was built on anarchistic principles and has an incredible efficacy um, of feeding people in need without tying them into any, um, you know, oppressive structure themselves. So, yeah. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. That, yeah. That's uh, that's that's something to think about. I uh, uh what was the the book you says you you recommended to me? Uh, the uh, the before, before religion? religion. Yeah, before religion by Brent Nongbri. I think you'll find value in it. Um, even if you don't agree with everything that he says, uh, his argument is um very very interesting, and it will uh inform you as to the history of the of the construction of the modern concept of religion, which he argues is highly fraught, and I would agree with him. Um, I think that like, yeah, yeah, that, that it actually is like a big problem. And I think that it actually leads to atheists, uh, chasing their own tail sometimes, which, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, if it's any, uh, anything, if it's good to hear, I don't spend a whole lot of time on Reddit. I, That's good. I mostly <laughs> just, I mostly just use Reddit for porn. So <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough. It's a good site for that. Um, well, anyway, Levi, uh, it was great talking with you. Um, this ended up being a really good conversation yeah. and, uh, I hope that, I hope that you found what I had to say valuable. Yeah. I certainly enjoyed engaging with you. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess, uh, if you, th if you, uh, I hope you'll continue to watch and in the future, maybe if you read that book, you'll let me know your thoughts. That'd be uh, cool as hell. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry for me stuttering. <laughs> and, you're you're uh, fine. You did just fine. You did very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. I, I was. I just got a little nervous when, like, put on a like. All of a sudden, I realized, oh no, there's hundreds of people watching me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bit intimidating, right? But hey, uh, you did a good job. So don't worry about it. You did great. Okay. Well, I hope you have a good evening. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Yeah. You too. Bye bye. All right. I think that was a good conversation. I actually think that was a, a really good faith conversation. Um, I quite enjoyed that. Um, I thought that was beneficial. Uh, what does everybody in chat think? You think it was, uh, think it was good?